guys, James with Jetty USA and Esprit Tech. I wanted to get with you today and talk to you a little bit about the Central Box 100, uh, why the Central Box 100 exists, what kind of models uh, you would use that for, and, and give you an idea of a basic setup. Uh, everybody knows the Central Box 200 and 400. Those are fantastic for the larger builds. Uh, if you want good, you know, robust power distribution, signal distribution, uh, the 100 is your option if you're building a smaller airframe. You know something in the mid 60s to to maybe you know 80 inch airframe um, typical 30 cc aerobatic type build or 30 cc warbird type build uh, the 100 is fantastic it gives you eight servo outputs so you still get all the benefits so to speak from your that you would get out of a central box 200 so you're getting the uh, or fused outputs to the servos uh, you're getting dual receiver redundancy so you have the capability there uh, to have that protection you have with a larger aircraft and a smaller airframe. What we've done on the board here is we've set this up uh, with the Central Box 100, two R3 receivers, but we've also added the DSM-10 uh, so that you have the dual battery redundancy that you would have in the larger units. So as you can see, all of this componentry is on a very small board. We've got a couple of uh, 1300 milliamp hour T-cell LiPo receiver packs, the DSM-10 uh, dual switch or dual battery redundant switch. That goes into the Central Box 100. We have two of the R3 receivers uh, there for our uh, receiving duties and we have another R3 operating as a wireless switch on the DSM-10. So this would give you remote on and off capability. It would give you dual redundancy in your receiver setup, and it would give you, of course, those fused outputs and telemetry and convenience that you get out of larger central boxes. Uh, currently, you'll see we've got two servos on the board. Only one of those is visible to you in the video. Uh, but you see right now it's set up on our aileron. Just like with the CB200, you have the ability to go into the system and dial directly into not just the receivers, but the central box as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the central box go into my servo output mapping. Right now output, output pin one is on aileron. Uh, just like the larger units, very simple to change. You just click on that setting, change that to whatever you want, and now we've set up one as our rudder servo. So very easy to make changes in the system, uh, very adaptable to your needs, just like the standard central box. You have all of the same settings uh, in the device explorer so you still go in and manipulate it the same way the expander settings your telemetry uh, all your min max stuff is all the same you have the ability just like you do in the larger ones to add a min max switch so you can clear the values uh, so for capacity you want to add a switch to clear those values you can also do that directly in the central in the uh, device explorer as well but that's our central box 100 we wanted just to come in and give you a quick idea on where you would use it. It seems a lot of people see the Central Box 100 and don't know what it's good for. It's really great in a large bus system where you're using a Central Box 400 and running remote to multiple CB100s out in the extremities of the airplane. It's also great as a standalone unit in the smaller aircraft. Again, this is something that would go in that 30 to 50 cc, 30 to 50 cc size simple aircraft that you're only using six to eight servos on. So if you have any questions on the Central Box 100 or the DSM-10 or any of the equipment that we're using today, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Esprit Tech or Jetty USA. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.